Timothy. All right. Well, good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Visalia, California. This is the time when we have our meditation time. And this morning you're going to hear the beautiful music of Kevin Esquivel while you meditate. And as you go into your meditation, I just invite you to take this affirmation with you. I celebrate the we, which is intimately one with itself. You can ponder that as you meditate. And we'll see you at 1015.
Well, welcome back from your meditation. I hope you enjoyed the beautiful music we provided from Kevin. Um, he is a wonderful pianist, and we're very blessed to have him play meditation music for us on Sunday. So now this begins our meet and greet time here at the center. Folks are going to be coming in, and we'll be chit-chatting. While you're at home, I suggest you get a beverage, a little something to snack on, and get yourself ready for a wonderful service at 1030, and we'll see you at 1030.
Did you lose your documents? <laughs> now you can turn me off while they're doing the music. Sing out of tune, would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song. That I'll sign up to sing out of key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. You can sing. I get high with a little help from my friends. Ooh, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. What do I do when my love is away? Does it worry you to be alone? How do I feel by the end of the day? Are you sad because you're on your own? No, no I get by with a little help from my friends. Ooh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Mm, gonna try with a little help from my friends. Do you need anybody? I need somebody to love. Could it be anybody? I want somebody to love. Would you believe in a love at first sight? Yes, I'm certain it happens all the time. What do you see when you turn out the light? I can tell you and I know it's fine. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Do you need anybody? Just need someone to love. goodness thank you so much we do get by with a little help from those friends I tell you what um, good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in Visalia California for all of those who are out there wherever you are in virtual land we are so happy to have you with us and welcome to you too this is a wonderful Sunday here in the valley and it's really really exciting it's only going to be 101 this afternoon so this is like wherever you are in rain and cold live it just love it, all right? So um, I don't see anybody here for the first time that's new, so we're going to just move along. But I sure see a lot of wonderful friends who are here again today. So we have announcements. And Donna, you can start out. Good morning. Good morning. So we have our movie days all planned now. So here they are. So remember in the well, those of you who were here a long time ago, way before COVID, way before, we used to have get-togethers at homes. Movies, dinner, games. Haven't done that for a long time, and then COVID hit. So the home office is making it easy for us to do that, except that they're during the day on Mondays. So it's going to be hard for people who work real jobs during the day to come to most of these. But <laughs> what? So let's... Um, Here's the 
the lowdown. So Monday movies and discussions. So the movies will be at 2.30 at these homes, and then the discussion comes in on Zoom at 5 o'clock except for the last one that Sheila's working on. So the first two, good old Lynn, wave your hand, Lynn. Lynn is hosting those in her home in Tulare. And she tells me she has a 52-inch um, TV with a soundboard. <laughs> it's going to be fancy, very nice. <laughs> so that is next Monday, um, Pursuit of Happiness, and then Last Holiday, which I signed up to go to because she persuaded me that it's a darling movie. <laughs> is it? Okay. <laughs> Then we don't have anybody for Avatar. If anybody still wants to sign up to host a few of these movies, we can still take host uh, for Avatar. And we don't have one for on August 8th for What Dreams May Come. I'm doing Da Vinci Code on August 15th. I have a little TV, no soundboard, but you can still see it. <laughs> and Da Vinci Code just fascinates me. And I think this discussion, I really want to hear what Science of Mind <laughs> has to say about this movie. <coughs> and then the Kinshus. Have, are going to um, host Encanto the following week, and they say they can host up to 15 people, so they must have a huge movie theater in their home. <laughs> and then we don't have one for Doctor Strange, if anybody wants to host that one. And then Sheila loves A Wrinkle in Time. And so there's no discussion from SOM, but Sheila, Sheila has this all figured out of why it has so much science of mind movie. She, She's going to do that one on a Friday night at 6 p.m. So those who do work during the day, that one you can come to. And all of these, it's $10 to attend, so it's a little bit of a fundraiser for, for our center. Plus, it's a get-together that we have new people, wonderful people that we don't know anymore. So I'm hoping some of, these, some of you can come to some of these. The sign-ups are right on the back. If you want to pay today, there's a little basket. And um, we want you to bring snacks to each one's because it's going to be a sort of a long afternoon. So I'm hoping these will appeal to you, at least one. And um, you can start signing up um, today because the first one is a week from Monday. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much, Donna. Boy, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. I you know, I have never been a very good moviegoer, but I absolutely am so excited to have this happening here because I think everybody will benefit from being able to see the Zooms with our uh, folks from the Centers for Spiritual Living and have a little wider range of input even while you're chit-chatting at home in somebody's living room. So what a fun time. All right, I know we've got some more. So today is the second to the last day of the ka -ching. And that's where we're talking about prosperity and abundance and tithing and all sorts of unexpected income that's just flowing into people's lives. And that's going to be today right after service. And then it'll be again next week, and we'll see what everybody has come up with for unexpected income and tithed on here. Very fun stuff. The One Hope Choir, as a reminder, is still rehearsing after service on the first and third Sundays. That will be next week. And uh, sooner or later, the choir will be singing at select Sunday services. I do know this. And so we are going to have that happen. The July book of the month is in our bookstore, and it is How to Be an Adult in Relationships. Now, David Rico is a wonderful author. He's a therapist and a teacher and a very spiritual man. And this book is outstanding. And there's also the companion book in there that's How to Be an Adult. And I recommend that for very many, many people that I visit with on occasions. So you can get that, and you can also get the July Science of Mind magazine in there. <clears throat> and this is very exciting. I'm really happy to present this today. Uh, Kim, our uh, remote practitioner from Grants Pass, Kim Bebo, is going to be down here on the 23rd. And she's going to be presenting an original workshop for living a fuller life. It's Saturday afternoon from 1 to 4. It's just a love donation, so you can throw whatever you want in the basket. But the um, topic of it is very, very germane to many people. Do I belong? And where do I belong? And how do I belong? And everyone really does want to belong. It's in our, it's in our DNA. It's in our matrix to be in a, in a setting and feel that we belong. So this is going to be fun. It's, it's a Saturday afternoon thing. And there is a sign-up sheet for it, and there's a little flyer over there that has a little more information on it if you want to look at it. 
The sign-up sheet is only so that we have an idea that we can get enough seats set up and have everything be comfy for everybody that day. And then on the 24th, the next day, we're going to have our first town hall meeting this year. So this is just going to be a really brief update. It's going to talk about where we are financially right now, not last year. We're going to be talking about events and upcoming events, what the fundraisers uh, have generated so far this year for revenue, and education update. I'll be revealing a fall uh, curriculum. And then everybody here, it's a potluck too. Don't forget, it's a potluck. And so everybody here will have the opportunity to just ask questions and just sit around like we're in our living room chit-chatting about life in the center. I highly recommend you put it on your schedule. All righty. Oh, now, here's your sneak preview. Yes, indeed. We are having... <laughs> our, our own Hope Garcia is going to present a benefit concert for the center here on August 19th. And there's going to be more information, but we wanted to get this out here. It's going to be a musical evening with Hope Garcia. So you all know you want to get some tickets to that. We'll let you know when the tickets are going to be on sale. I'm very excited about this. And here's another tidbit. If we sell out on the first show, we'll run one the second week the same way. I hope saying, hope saying we're going to sell out on the first one, so get ready. I'm ready for that. All righty, I believe that that's the end of our announcements for right now. So now I get to offer our inclusivity quote for today. And this quote was selected by Bonnie Carlia, one of our inclusivity and diversity team members. And the quote today is from Gary Zukoff, and it is, compassion is loving another's enough to say or do what is appropriate from an empowered heart without attachment to the outcome. Now think about that. Compassion is loving others enough to say or do what is appropriate from an empowered heart without attachment to the, to the outcome. That's a very interesting thought, and I hope you'll spend some time with that. Um, our inclusivity group meets uh, by, uh, by a Zoom on Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock, and you're welcome to join through. You can get onto the website and get to it that way. So <clears throat> I'm, also, I'm also the practitioner on the podium today. So I'm going to do our weekly affirmation, and if you would like to put that up, I invite each of you to say this with me. I'm going to say it first, and then we're going to do it together with feelings so that everybody out there in virtual land can hear us. So I celebrate the we, which is intimately one with itself. Another fascinating thought. Ready? I celebrate the we, which is intimately one with itself. Mm -hmm. Let's do that again. That's a very important thought. I celebrate the we, which is intimately one with itself. You know, we're all connected, whether we recognize it and realize it all the time. Alrighty, so now I'd just like to offer an opening prayer for our service. So if you'll just join me for a moment in bringing to your own mind what that, uh, what that infinite loving presence that I call spirit or God or the thing itself, whatever we want to call it, to bring to our present mind what that is, to our own consciousness, our own personal, our own personal relationship with that essence within us that is all around us. It is that one source of infinite life, hmm. forever and ever expanding through us, as us. It is us. And as it expands, so do we. And as we open our hearts and our minds during this time together, I know that that infinite loving presence is fully supporting this activity. I know that this time together, as we come together in relationship, both long time and brand new, is a blessing. And that it is the wonder of the universe for us to be in relationship with each other during this time in this sacred space, in this sacred place, and enjoy the love and beauty and wonder of the relationship of all life. And so I bless this service. I bless everyone here and beyond, beyond here and within or beyond the sound of my voice today. And I know that this is a sacred time, an appointment in the divine mind that's time has come. And for this and so much more, I am incredibly grateful. 
And I just release my word directly into the law, knowing that it is done. And so it is. <clears throat> All righty. And now we got some fabulous special music. Get ready. So this is kind of fun. And I want to see how many of you recognize it. And you're welcome to sing along if you can. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, you just remember what your old pal said. For you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. a friend in me you got a friend in me you got troubles well I got them too there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you we stick together and we see it through cuz you got a friend in me yes you got a friend Some folks might be a little bit smarter than I am, bigger and stronger too, maybe. But none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's me and you, boy. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're going to see it's our destiny. You got a friend in me. Yes, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Oh, that's such a funky little Randy Newman tune. I love it. I just love it. It just sets the tone for the whole little thing here going on today. Well, welcome again, and good morning. And boy, this is a wonderful day hmm. as we come together here to explore our July theme of living everyday wonder in relationships. One of my favorites. Yes, indeed. You know, this is a very interesting topic. Sometimes when we think of relationships, we only consider that the deeper connections we have with our friends and family really qualify as relationships. However, whether we're aware of it or not, we are in a constant relationship with spirit, ourselves, and all of creation. And sometimes we don't even consider seemingly incidental count encounters as being interactive and a relationship with others. But I want to say that Sometimes things are deceiving. So I just have a little story about hidden opportunities here. One Sunday, a minister told her congregation that the church needed some extra money. Now, this is a preview for things to come, but not today. And she asked the people to consider donating a little more than usual as the offering plate was passed. She said that whoever gave the most that day would be able to pick out three hymns after the offering, the plates were passed, and the minister glanced down and noticed that someone had placed a $1,000 bill in the offering basket. And she was so excited that she immediately shared her joy with the congregation and said she'd like to personally thank the person who put that money in the plate. She waited just a minute, and a very quiet elderly lady in all the way in her back, she, in the back row, shyly waved her hands. And the minister asked her to come down to the front. And slowly she made her way to where the minister was standing. And the minister told her how much, how wonderful it was that she gave so much. And in gratitude, asked her to pick out three hymns. Well, the little woman's eyes brightened as she looked over the congregation and she pointed to three guys sitting in the congregation and said, I'll take him and him and him. 
So you see, so you see, opportunities for relationships can occur in the most unlikely settings. And this week, our focus is on uh, relationships with our friends, family, and community. And now this includes those we know personally, as well as those we refer to as strangers. How we relate to each stranger we encounter through a nod, a wave, or eye contact is an opportunity to make connections, to build community, even when we may never see them again. By our paths crossing, our lives and their lives have been changed. And how we approach these encounters reveals more about us than it does about them. What may begin as a wondering about another shifts to being an awareness of just how wonderful it is to be in relationship with another, even if it's lasted just long enough to hold the door open for them. There's an old quote by William J. Toms who stated, be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible some person ever reads. Well, I'd like to paraphrase that to our spiritual teaching in this way. Let's be mindful of our interactions with others. We may be the only science of mind verse or affirmation that someone ever experiences in their life. Now, that doesn't mean that we go around spouting our philosophy as we open doors for everybody, or we shout affirmations as greetings to our neighbors. It simply means that our philosophy and faith, as we embody our spiritual principles, creates a way of life that is evident in even our smallest encounters. Now think about it. <clears throat> when was the last time you gave another driver who was a bit rude the one-finger salute? Or how often have you been in line to check out at a store and you were impatient and irritable with the people in front of you and the people behind you and the lady or the man at the cash register? Mm. When was the last time you smiled at someone you passed in the grocery store aisle or any store aisle just because you could? And when did you last hold a door for anyone to pass through? When we consider our spiritual principle of oneness, we often get caught in a loop of confusion since we wonder how we can be one and so many folks are different than what we believe. And too often in our philosophy, I have heard folks say, we just need more people to know this philosophy so everyone can think like we do. Well, I, I do understand the well-intentioned sharing of this teaching because it is a wonderful way of life. It is more than a faith and a philosophy. It is a way of life. Yet, if we make statements that proclaim that we have the right thing, <clears throat> that's not so far from a lot of other exclusive religious traditions when you stop to think about it. We aren't exclusive with our spiritual principles. We are completely inclusive in our faith tradition. And we welcome everyone, right? Uh -huh. Or do we? Or do we? How does that welcoming inclusivity show up in us as individuals when we're here at the center and someone new comes? <clears throat> How does it show up when we're in social settings with folks we don't know? Oh, and here's a good one. How does it show up when we are in family settings with folks that we do know with whom we have opposing views? Now there's a, there's a, a sticky one. Those are some interesting thoughts that I offer you to take into meditation and contemplation this week. You know, the reality is, is that we are wired for relationship. And Daniel Goldman notes this in his book, Social Intelligence. He writes, neuroscience has discovered that our brain's very design makes it sociable, inexorably drawn into an intimate brain-to-brain link-up with another person. We are wired to connect. And that link is a double-edged sword. Nourishing relationships have a beneficial impact on our well-being, while toxic ones can act like slow poison in our bodies and beings. So relationships, all kinds of relationships, are opportunities to practice our spiritual principles. 
Yet in religious science, there is still a great deal of rugged individualism and the paradigms that cause us to believe and live as if it is only about what we do individually in this teaching that matters. <coughs> Excuse me. Some folks, not necessarily here, but some folks still fervently believe that centers for spiritual living and science of mind and spirit have nothing to do with changing the world, only changing our individual selves. Now granted, the spiritual work begins with us and spreads out, but this paradigm is so outdated and ineffective in creating a world that works for all. If it was solely about our individual selves, well, we wouldn't need to gather <clears throat> in our spiritual communities. We would be content to remain on our individual islands of consciousness, just wallowing about. In a practical sense, we understand our interdependence with others. Since most of us don't make our own clothing, we don't grow all of our own food, we don't produce our own vehicles, don't build our own houses, etc., 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 as the king would have said in The King and I. Taking a page from the biblical text, we know that the Jewish man from Palestine, sometimes referred to as Yeshua, didn't work alone. He surrounded himself with 12 disciples whom he taught to go out into the world to continue the work of elevating the consciousness, feeding the poor, and healing the sick. All 13 of them did their work individually and collectively out in the communities they visited. <clears throat> the most spiritual qualities evident in all humans are most apparent when we band together for a greater good. This is so often seen in the daily tragedies we witness on the news. And while we may find those events discordant with love, peace, and freedom for all, out of the ashes rises compassion. The walls of judgment break down and there is no other as folks come together. As Matthew Fox notes, compassion is about relationship, about sharing joy and grief, and working to relieve one another's pain. Now we see that in the words of the we in community. We are Boston strong. We are Uvalde strong. We are Buffalo strong. We are Highland Park strong. All bringing forward the spiritual qualities that are at the center of our individual being in a collective strength that defies the tragedies brought about by hate, prejudice, and discrimination. We see it in times of natural catastrophes or major world disasters. Desmond Tutu wrote in the book that he wrote, The Book of Joy, we don't really get close to others if our relationship is made up of an unending hunky doriness. It is the hard times, the painful times, the sadness and the grief that knit us more closely together. The moment we really understand that everyone is an individualized expression of God, it calls us into a deeper understanding and practice of how we relate to each expression of the one in everyone we meet. And I would like to offer the perspective that we can come together in love as often as we choose that without having to have grief or tragedy bring us closer. A world that works for all requires a level of consciousness that has never existed before because the world that we live in now never existed as it does now before. Never, never before have so many people on the planet had the news, mass information, and an abundance of social connections readily available on the many computers that we call our smartphones that we carry around daily. We're always tapped in. The oversaturation of media has never been before. And if we are to manifest a, a new world that works, then we must evolve into a new consciousness, a consciousness that calls us into a deeper levels of connection in person and via technology. You know, in a, in a world where the pandemic pushed us farther apart physically, we came together digitally in creative and powerful ways. Today, 
we're still called to connect with others in new and powerful ways. Communicate, collaborate, cooperate with others in wonderful and meaningful ways that nurture and empower and recognize and engage ourselves with one another because of the unconditional, immutable, irrefutable, and irresistible power of love. Our greatest relationship lesson, I think, as Roger Teal said, is to proclaim our shared essence and to become masterful at both celebrating uniqueness and honoring oneness. When we realize that we are so much more than separate organisms, that we are actually beings of light, each of us radiating a unique expression of universal light, we can gain access again to our source of true power. And I believe that true power is love. And in closing, I'd like to share these words from Dr. Ernest Holmes. Now, they can be found in the meditations at the back of the Science of Mind text on page 547. I highly recommend those meditations. They're beautiful, and they lift me up every time I look at them. He writes, <clears throat> this is titled Love to the World. He writes, my love goes out to everyone in the world. I do not exclude anything, for I love all nature and everything that is. My love warms and lightens everything that it touches, and it goes out into all places. The love flowing through me is a power to all who come in contact with it, and all feel and know that I love. Love within me is complete and perfect. Love within me is complete and perfect. So I invite each of us, as we go through this week, to bring that complete, perfect love that is within each of us to the forefront in every relationship we experience. To remember, as Dr. Holmes said, that since there is but one spirit, and this spirit is in you and in everything, then everywhere you go, you will meet this spirit. You meet this spirit in people, in places, and in things. Let that be our leading edge as we move through our daily experiences and in so doing, really be part of that ever-expansive new consciousness, creating a world that works for all, including strangers who might just be friends we don't know yet. Because, as I always say, love prevails, and so it is. <clears throat> the uh, pollen is high and it's experiencing itself right inside me. I am, I am one with all it is. <clears throat> so I am not infested. It's uh, that allergy thing. So I'd like to just say a little prayer to, to bring that idea to a close. And so as we come together in this moment <laughs> with that joyful voice of that resident baby singing in the background that I so love, that little emanation of the divine. Ah, I hear that joy. I hear that joy in that baby's sound. In each of our hearts, I call forth that joy because that joy, that love, is the absolute divine essence of the one through which everything has been created, always has been, and always will be. And right now, as I bring that love to the forefront in each of us and for everyone everywhere, I know that that love that is, it is an expanding, ever-powerful force within each of us, is capable and fully operating in creating that new world that works for all. Using things we don't even know yet, we bring forth that which is innovative in the presentation of love in relationship with all creation. Ah, I see this world that is above the reality of the forms that we see, now being newly created in a way of intelligence, divine intelligence, infinite possibilities, and, and the realities of light in harmony, in joy, in love, and in beauty with itself. For we know that even Plato said that beauty was an aspect of God. Mm. And so knowing that this is so, I give great thanks. I give great, great thanks. My heart is overfilled with joy at the idea of this 
now happening right here, right now in our world. And with that great thanks in my heart, I simply release this directly into the law of mind that always says, yes, my beloved's yes. And I know that it is done, and so it is. And so now we've got some more special music for you. One more time. gonna be this way your job's a joke you broke your love lies the away it's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day your week your month or even your year i'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour i'll be there for you like i've been there before i'll be there for me too. We've been dead and your work begins at eight. Burn your breakfast so far, things are going great. Your mother warned you there'd be days like these. But she didn't tell you the world was brought you down, down to your knees. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. before I'll be there for you and you're there for me too no one could ever know me no one could ever see me seems like you're the only one who knows what it's like to be me someone to face the day with make it through we come together in community yes indeed so now it's time thank you ever so much for that that was so much fun and so now it's time for our conscious giving affirmation so as we come together our folks who are doing this part could begin their little tour of the facility here you know, I just want to bring to mind the idea that <laughs> We are living in a divine flow of good all the time. And so let's just take our gifts to our heart, time, treasure, or talent. Place them over our heart and know that as we say this affirmation, <laughs> we are filled with gratitude. So I'll say it once, we'll say it together, and we're going to say it with feeling. I affirm the divine flow of good in my life as I share my gifts with gratitude. All righty? Okay, I affirm the divine flow of good in my life as I share my gifts with gratitude. I want to hear gratitude like, like you really mean it. Are you really glad about your, your gifts? What's going on here? Gratitude, yes? Gratitude. There you go, much better. All right. I do know that that infinite loving spirit that is always abundant 
I mean, there is no other word. We see the abundance of spirit in all of creation. We see the abundance of spirit in all of life. We see the prosperous flow of all good through this center that keeps us going and keeps us operating, keeps us here every Sunday and for our classes and for our special events. And I know that that same infinite prosperity is, is flowing through each and every person here, those of you who are out there, wherever you may be, open to receive. For as much as you open to receive, you shall always, always receive it. It's a reciprocal universe. And for what we give out, we must receive back 100-fold. So knowing, knowing that this is so, I know that as these gifts are collected, that everyone here and beyond, and you can push your donate button on the website, I know that everyone here and beyond is fully supported in spirit, by spirit, as spirit, and abundantly prospered. It must be so. I am absolutely 100% absolutely sure of that. And so I receive these gifts with great gratitude and joy and I know that these are the gifts of love of pure spirit that come here in so many different ways. I'm so very grateful. So very grateful because I know that these gifts do so much here in our center to support our center, to support our community, and to support the world as the Centers for Spiritual Living global expansion continues. We're everywhere, you know. That's spirit in action. And so I bless these gifts. I give great, great thanks. And I let it be, and so it is. <clears throat> All righty, and now we get to do our peace song. So to the extent that you are comfortable, we can gather up in our circle. And it's going to be a, it's a gonna, it's a gonna be a big one, as Lawrence Welk would say. It's going to be a good one. Yes, indeed. I'm getting there. Were you just flying down the aisle there? Yeah, I had to put my brakes on. Oh, good. Ready? Oh, my goodness, we have so many people here today. We've got, we're taking up three chairs worth of space just to make a circle. Mm-hmm. Oh, exciting. Hit it, boys. <laughs> Yeah, it has. Beautiful voices here in this sanctuary. For all of you who are at home, you all got to come down sometime because this is where it's at. So, and even if you're far, far away, we understand. So it's okay. All right, so this is the fun time now. If you're ready, repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening through me right now. Something wonderful is happening through me Well, it's called this thing. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. 
And life is in my body. Life is in my body. Oh, and it's in the body of my affairs. I think it. And I feel it. Oh, and I love it. Just the way that it is. And in fact, just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Kaching will start in a few minutes. No one told you life was going to be this way. Job's a joke, you broke your love life's the away. Or even your ear,